Shimai. It's a beautiful January morning and we're going to do something a little bit different today. First of all, we're going to have a look at um, some of the things that we've got from the coppice that we did last week. If you remember, I coppiced that small patch of woodland and I'm going to show you around some of the bits that we've got. And then we're going to have a look at making a bism broom. Now, I've never done it before. I've read about it. I've um, got lots of books that show examples and explain how it should be done, but um, not done it. So we'll kind of muddle our way through and see how we get on. Okay, so I've transported all of the bits uh, that I cut out of the coppice up and um, I've laid them out for the time being, just, just sort of for demonstration. Uh, so I've got a stack here of, it's, it's mixed, it's a bit of hazel, it's a bit of um, hornbeam actually, and some silver birch and bits and pieces. And there's some short sort of rods there that can be used for bean poles and other bits and pieces. Um, also, I've got some longer ones there can see and then these are slightly thicker hazel here and I've got some beautiful silver birch really quite long there three stacks of different sizes and thicknesses hopefully one of those will end up being a handle for the bism broom or even one of these hazels it needs to be sort of very straight um, and also then I've got some really thin hazel ones there that can be used. Now if I come back over here, past the stacks, at the back up here, we'll whiz past these first and come back to them. At the back there, I've got those, that stack there, uh, pea sticks. So I'll be putting those in the ground when the time comes and growing my peas up those and beans up a lot of these sticks. But here, I've got four bundles. I've got a bundle here, bundle there, and two bundles there. Now this is all the, the thinner sticks of the silver birch. And the reason I've kept these is because this is what we'll be using for the head of the bism broom. Now a bism broom is made up of a head and a tail, the tail being the handle and the head being the brushy bit. So a, a bism broom is basically um, what, what we always consider to be a witch's broom. Now, as I said, I've, I've never made a bism broom before. Um, I've read about it and these bundles, I've bundled them in, in size of, of the sticks. This is the smaller bits here, the shorter bits, and those two bundles there are the, the longer, bigger bits. Um, and they say that when you store them, they should be bundled like this and put sort of end to end. So you can see the thicker end is here, the bushy end is there, and they would be stacked one on top of the other. Um, sort of alternating. So these would be this way going across that way and then the next pile would be that way and then that way and so on. Um, and the reason is it allows the air to, to still flow through it and, and dry them out but not dry them out too quickly. Now I've read that before making a bism broom these bundles can be kept for sort of up to six months. I also read that they make the better bism brooms if they are stored for a while but I won't be storing them I'll be having a go at making them sort of straight away so we'll we'll see it could just be because as as the wood dries out it will shrink so they could become a little bit looser I'm not I'm not really sure but um, anyway we'll give it a go so before we embark on this little project, a little bit of background is always helpful. A bism um, is actually, the, the reason they call bism brooms is because the definition of a bism is a bundle of twigs tied around a stick for sweeping. And, that, and that's ultimately what they're for, is sweeping. Um, I've said they're also known as witches brooms. And a traditional broom maker was known as a broom squire. So most bism broom heads are made up of uh, birch or heather, and as you can see, you know, I've, I've got birch here. Um, and heather, I think, is a, is a bit more tricky to get, but, um, but traditionally, like I say, that's what they, was, they, they were made out of. Now, bism brooms are excellent for, for brushing up leaves, and particularly wet leaves, brushing snow, uh, because the twigs don't snag like modern rakes. And actually, going back not so very long ago, every cottage and workshop and farm and many factories used bisms until actually about the, the sort of early 19th century when um, other, other types of rakes were, were manufactured. Now, it's actually believed that Iron Age man would have used similar brushes, um, but obviously because they're made of thin twigs and wood, they rotted easily. So, so evidence, there really isn't evidence because it all rots away. 
Now, tailless bism, so just these these heads like this, um, are known as swales, and they've they, they've been used and are sometimes still used in ironworks to remove the scale from the red hot steel. And it's said that as you sweep across the steel, obviously the tips will burn, and and somehow that does some kind of magical alchemy that that makes the steel even better and even more pure. Now, um, quite often bism brooms are still used on um, parks and, and golf courses because they are so effective of sweeping up leaves and, and rubbish and bits and pieces. So from the information I've read, the first thing I need to do is pick out from the bundle sticks that are going to be about the right size. They need to be around about nine millimetres in diameter at the, th at the thick end down here. Um, around about a metre long, you know, sort of 60 to 90 to 100 centimetres long. And what I need to do is pick out enough that I can make a bundle that ends up being around about um, 25 to 30 centimetres in diameter. So kind of like that, so a nice big bundle. And then what we'll do, we'll bind it together. So I'm going to start picking through, like this is a nice one. There's another nice one, and I'll start putting them together. Now, the idea is, from what I've read, is that as we start to put this bundle together, if any of them are sort of arching outwards, for example, if I pull that one out, and you can see there's an arch in that one turning that way, that arch needs to turn in towards the middle of the stack, so it ends up being like a tulip shape. Um, so we'll, we'll start picking through this stack, we'll try and make our bundle and see how we go. Okay, so I'm starting to bundle these now. And what I'm doing, I'm just picking them up. There's the, the curve there and I'll put it there and then I'll roll it. And then I'll pick up the next one and I'll put it onto the bundle and I'll roll it. And it'll continue to grow in size, aiming these into the middle to get that tulip shape. And then pick it up. That one's a bit thick, so I'm going to reject that one. And we'll just keep building this up till it gets to about 25 to 30 centimetres in diameter. OK, so I think I'm happy-ish with, with my stack. It's, um, it's probably near enough about the right size. Now, it's usually held together with natural bindings, or bonds, they call them. And they can be anything from sort of... Um, uh, brambles that have had the, the, the spikes stripped off them to ash that's been split down, hazel that's split, chestnut, oak, um, lots and lots of different natural bindings. Now I'm going to be, for the purists, I'm going to be cheating a little bit and I've got some sort of farm type wire and the bonds are traditionally about four foot long which is about 1.2 meters. Now as I understand it I need to put one binding around about there. The traditional bindings using natural materials would have been three. Now I, I think, from what I've read, using sort of wire you can get away with two bindings. One needs to be about 10 centimetres up and one needs to be about um, 2.5 centimetres in. Now that's clearly not 2.5 centimetres but my plan, because these are all at different lengths, is to put one here and then the next one there and then cut it off to the right place. So we'll see how this goes. Goodness knows if I'll get it tight enough. So I'll pop the wire under there, make sure this is nice and tight. And I'm going to assume that that's about right there. And I'm, I don't know whether I should do one wrap or two wraps or how I should be doing this. I know that with the traditional, the traditional way of doing it was to wind it round and round. Like I say, because these aren't dried for a few months, they may not hold, but I'm going to give that a little pull with the pliers. There we are. And I'm going to, oopsie, wind that one round again. And give that a little pull. See if I can pull it with my hand. There we are. Oh, that's tightened up nicely. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give that a twist with the pliers, put that on the wire there, give it a twist, and hopefully that will hold there. Now the next phase of the operation is to do another one further down. So I'm gonna try and do the same again. I've got my wire, I'm gonna tuck it under, and 
it used to be said that it was about four inches, so about 10 centimeters between this one and that one. Now I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get it that accurate, so it'll be what it'll be. But if I can fold that one under, and I'll give that a little pull for starters. Tighten him up. And then the same with this one. Oh, I can see why they used to use a special clamp for this job. And I'm gonna go around a third time actually with that one. So, it seems, seems relatively tight, so I'll put that like that, give it a little twist. And we'll do the same with the pliers. Make sure it's on there tight. Okay, I'll pull that up. Actually, by pulling that up, it's got a bit tighter, so I'm gonna pull it up a bit more. And give it a twist, there we are. And I'll twist this up now and tighten it like I've done with the other. And I just trimmed that one off so it's, um, so it's out of the way. That, I think, is the head of my bism completed. So I'll cut this off across here now so it's nice and flat. And the next job is then we'll make the handle. I'll find a nice, um, a nice length of either the silver birch by there or the hazel and we'll make a nice handle that can be then put up inside there. Okay, I've bought the handle. This is a bit of birch. Um, it's 1.2 meters long, which is four foot. Um, and it's comfortable to the size of my hand. So I've bought it to my shave horse. Now, if you remember from previous video, this is a special thing that I sit on. I push, push it with my foot and it traps it in there. It's perfectly solid. And I'm gonna use my draw knife, which is a very sharp tool. And I've said before, you pull it towards you, but because you're using both hands, there's no way that you can actually bring it into your body. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use this to peel off the bark and any knots or branches that were on there, just carefully shave them down so it feels nice and smooth in your hand. Now, one of the reasons you take off the bark is because um, things like woodworms and insects that will attack sticks tend to go for the bark. If the bark is still on it, it, it just makes it an easier target for them. So we shave this off, we'll shave off all the bark, we'll make any of these little knots like this nice and smooth and we'll do it right the way down the length and then we'll have a look at fitting it onto the onto the head there we go so i've peeled the handle i've shaped the end so it's not rough now i've kind of rushed this so it's not the, the best finish at the moment but there it is lying up along the, the stack of um along the head of the, the birch. So this is called, like I say, the handle is called the tail. Now I've cut the end off there, about 2.5 centimeters, about an inch from the end. And you can see what a beautiful, looks lovely. So the next job is that we're gonna put the handle as close to the middle as we can. And the way we bump it on is that we don't hit the handle. We end up pushing this into there and then we'll be bumping it down onto a stump. So the weight of the head We'll push it down. Now, I don't really know how far in it needs to go. I'm guessing it's gonna to need to go in around about there. So there's a like a bit of a knot where a branch came out there. So we're hoping to bump it into about that far. Okay, so I've inserted it as close to the middle as I can. And like I said, I'm just gonna bump it. There we go. Look at that, that slid in really well. And there's the one we're looking for there. So we'll try and just make sure it's still going in straight. That, I think, is probably far enough. So, as I read it, I think the next, pro the next project we need to do with this is that we make a small peg. Now, pegs were traditionally made out of ash, and I will drill into there. It will go through the tail, through the handle, in the middle of there, and it will stop the handle sliding further down or coming back up. And then, following that, any really long, straggly bits, I'll just trim off and then we should have a finished bism. Okay, so my final job, and again, this would have been done by hand in the old days when I'm cheating with a drill, is to drill through here and through the handle. So I'm gonna line that up just right and... Yeah, right the way through. Perfect, lovely job. And I've made 
a little tapered peg. Now I've left the end like that so I can saw it off afterwards because I'm not sure quite how far it's going to go in. So I'm just going to line that up and tap it in with the back of my axe until it stops. That feels pretty good actually. It's not come right through but that feels pretty secure to me. I don't know how far it should go in. I'm assuming that it's gone through so we'll leave it at that. We'll cut that off shape the end and we'll see how we're looking. Okay, so there we go. That's the finished bism. Peg in, trim the ends um, and it's all good, good to go. Now the only thing that perhaps I've done wrong um, until I start using it and find out what else is wrong is that this should have dried a bit first um, and so should the handle. Everything will shrink I guess so this could come loose. So I've left a little bit extra on in case I need to tighten it at a later date. Um, but my goodness, doesn't it make you appreciate the, the skill and the hard work that went into these things. Now, a, a traditional um, sort of broom squire could have been making heaps of these in a day to make it worth it while. So they would have put a day aside and just concentrated on making brooms. And it would have been really the waste material. This, this birch would have been waste. So um, making use of the things that um, really would have gone to waste. So it's fantastic. What a fascinating process. And um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it as, as much as I have. I feel um, a massive sense of satisfaction in creating this. So uh, there we go. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.